If I told you of a race of giant humans, far larger than us, with seemingly superhuman abilities that allow them to survive in impossible conditions, living before we as sapiens learn to write or even draw, you would most certainly disregard this story as mere myth or fanciful conjecture. I, being the cynic I am, know I most definitely would. But sometimes we find that in the world of anthropology, now and then we are blown away by almost unthinkable discoveries. What's even more remarkable when thinking of these mysterious humans is that we as Homo sapiens encountered these incredible humans for the first time face to face in what must have been an incredible, if not terrifying, experience many, many thousands of years ago. Discovered in 2010 in Denisova Cave, Siberia, Russia, a new human species had entered our understanding of the prehistoric world. From just a tiny finger bone found in this cave, researchers were able to analyze the DNA within and found that this bone belonged to what we now know as a mysterious class of humans called Denisovans. After using the DNA found within the finger bone to reconstruct what the species looked like, they seem to be very much just like Homo sapiens and Neanderthals for that matter, with a few small differences. Their skulls were much wider and their build was far more robust with thicker bones and a much heavier torso. From this finding, many early conclusions were drawn on the size of Denisovans, and the images we have seen so far have been in line with the general guesswork upon the size of the species. The findings continued, and we began to find more and more pieces of the puzzle, allowing for us to see more clearly what this species was. There was just one issue. The findings kept showing very different individuals. Some so different, scientists still debate, to this day, whether these could even be classified as the same species. The waters became, and still are, so muddy when it comes to Denisovans that it seems scientists are all over the place, still trying to figure out who these people were, where they lived, and what they looked like. This led myself and several others in the field to draw the conclusion that these were different groups of Denisovans, each slowly evolving into their own distinct species, becoming ever more different to each other as their environment shaped them into the best possible machine suited to each set of environmental factors. The one that grabbed my attention the most was one of the largest and most incredible of the specimens found so far, shown here. What you are looking at is a tooth found in Denisova Cave belonging to an adult Denisovan man. And what you see next to it is a comparison of an adult modern day human. That's very, very large. In fact, that is one of the largest teeth to ever belong to a member of the Homo family, including all the multitude of species before us, like Homo habilis, Erectus, Neanderthals, and so on. Some scientists have put forward the idea that this tooth was merely larger as it resembles the larger teeth of our very earliest ancestors, such as Australopithecus. This would mean that this human was a lot more primitive in its lifestyle and in particular with the food it ate and how it was processed. But this doesn't make sense. Denisovans, from all of our knowledge of them, seem to have been very advanced for their time, living lives similar to and in fact above our own. Logically, their morphology should follow our judging by their drills, art, intricate stitching technology that these humans had. 
they were more advanced than their sapien counterparts at that time. Trying to paint them as a primitive giant toothed vegetation eater like a panda is nonsensical. Another species nicknamed the Nutcracker Man existed 2 million years ago and did have teeth like this. But this creature was more like a gorilla than a human. And we can clearly see the massive difference in skull shape and morphology. Because it spent most of its days chewing on vegetation and possibly cracking nuts with these giant teeth. This is not anything we expect to see from a human even slightly similar to modern day man. Everything about a modern human's morphology has a huge deal to do with the food we eat and how we process it. The more advanced our technology and the smarter we are, the more we tend to process our food with mashing, grinding, and cooking. Through this process, a giant set of teeth and jaw become less beneficial and we see them shrink down to a fraction of their original size with upright tool using human species. So if they were not using these teeth like Nutcracker Man and we can assume that their morphology was similar to ours and their heads were proportional this leaves us with the stunning notion that they were absolutely massive, far, far larger than any human species discovered thus far. So how large exactly? Well, as reported on by the New York Times in this piece, Frida Welker, a molecular anthropologist, after extracting DNA from a Denisovan jawbone from Tibet, which we will discuss a bit later, had this to say. Everything about their heads seems to have been big, from their giant molars to their thick jaws to their massive brain cases. Dr. Viola speculated adults may have weighed well over 200 pounds. I'd assume they'd be very large and robust individuals. These are like football players. An estimate such as this is quite remarkable as Denisovans had an average weight well over 200 pounds, which meant that there would certainly be many individuals far, far larger than this average. To put this into perspective, the average adult human weighs around 150 pounds today when looked at on a global scale. And this includes a very large chunk of the population artificially pushing up that weight through prevalent obesity levels in modern day humans. Personally, I find this a very conservative estimate, which anthropologists tend to caution towards historically. This is due to the accusations of pseudoscience being thrown at anyone who dare to do otherwise. Consider too that with these estimates, the Denisovans were probably capable of reaching much bigger sizes under the right conditions, like a lack of periods of famine, which stunt growth, and good nutrition, which boosts overall height for humans. With an average of well over 200 pounds, some of these humans could easily have been close to double that, lean and without fat which incredibly means that these bigger individuals could have been seven, maybe eight feet tall. Stunning to say the least. In my opinion, the more of the species we uncover, the closer we get to this realization that they were really this big. And on that note, I should introduce you to Pengu Wat, this is a jawbone of an adolescent human, which was discovered close to Pengu Island under the sea near Taiwan. This very large and robust jawbone was so out of the ordinary for human species close to us in morphology that at the time of its discovery, some scientists were under the belief that it belonged to Gigantopithecus. 
Now, if you haven't heard of Gigantopithecus, you might like this, because in a way, King Kong was real. Of course, not as big as a house and to that scale, but not far off. The sheer size of this beast was incredible, and it may have lived around the same time as the Denisovans, in the exact same location. Quite something to imagine these two species meeting with each other. But I digress. What's even more remarkable about this species is that this was an adolescent. An adolescent with a set of teeth and a jaw multiple times the size of an adult male modern human. Astounding. The jawbone has been classified as Denisovan by most experts on the matter, with some of them wanting to call it its own species being that of Homo tsiai changensi. I got that one right. I find it likely that a specimen such as this gives us solid evidence of an extremely large Denisovan, one which in the future as we unearth more of their history, may become more of the norm. Considering the size of a juvenile jaw being much bigger than a fully grown male modern humans, just imagine the size of an adult of this species. An argument is sometimes made that jawbones and teeth are not a good determiner of the size of the creature. but. In this case, with such a massive difference, to believe that, as most scientists have put forward, these humans were shorter than us, is almost impossible. Imagine a giant's head with enormous teeth on a human significantly shorter than us. It would look comical to say the least. So if jawbones and teeth are not convincing enough, what if we demonstrate their size using another specimen that has nothing to do with jaws and teeth? Another interesting find was the pinky bone uncovered in Denisova Cave we spoke about earlier that belonged to a young girl. The remarkable thing about this pinky bone is its size relative to adult Homo sapiens. Notice how it is larger than that of an adult male human's pinky bone and this Denisovan girl was around the age of 13. Logically with this in mind, compare the size difference of the average pinky bone of a modern day preteen girl's with that of an adult man's and try to picture the size of this Denisovan girl's father, brother, uncles. So why do we call them ice giants? There seems to be a common thread where these enormous jawbones and teeth are found in mountainous regions that through the several ice ages these humans endured must have been remarkably inhospitable places. Being found largely in Siberian caves in the Altai Mountains and extremely high elevations in the Tibetan mountains. Why were they there? I mentioned it a bit earlier, but the best example we have from the Tibetan plateau is the Shahi mandible, which again was absolutely enormous and belonged to a very robust individual. It was found by a Buddhist monk in the cave who was meditating there. This was the first discovery of Denisovans outside of Denisova cave, and it rocked the anthropological world with speculation and wonder. A place such as this must have been unimaginably cold and inhospitable during these times. And these massive humans had evolved highly resilient and robust bodies in order to survive there. In fact, the Tibetans who live in these areas have been found to contain DNA from these Denisovans that granted them the ability to live at extreme altitudes and survive in very low oxygen environments. 
Perhaps the monk who found this jawbone was a distant grandson of that very Denisovan to who it belonged. My bet is yes. Yes, we mixed with Denisovans many millennia ago. And Asians as well as people native to Oceania and the Americas usually contain some Denisovan DNA with highly variable amounts and most likely from different groups of Denisovans who were spread out over the enormous landmass that Asia is. These genes inherited from our Denisovan ancestors helped Homo sapiens in the area cope with these icy temperatures, this low oxygen and unforgiving terrain. Perhaps the extraordinary ability Tibetan monks have to heat themselves up during meditation while wearing wet cloths in frigid mountain air to the point where steam is produced has something to do with DNA inherited from Denisovans who were so well adapted to the cold. These genes inherited from Denisovans most certainly were beneficial for humans and have been selected for over thousands of years. Interestingly, Denisovans interbred with Neanderthals extensively and a lot of their genome may originate from them. And speaking of Neanderthal DNA, allow me to introduce our sponsor for today. Wondering how much Neanderthal DNA you have? Tommy Jen has generously decided to give my viewers a 10% discount on their DNA tests. This is one of the few DNA tests that shows the amount of Neanderthal DNA you have. Being one of the most comprehensive DNA tests out there, they also offer tons of super interesting info relating to your genetic code and can tell you about your paternal and maternal haplogroups, as well as health, pharmacological and nutritional information unique to your DNA. Click the link below and use my coupon Archives of ECNI to get your 10% discount. Anyway, without further ado, let's get back to the video. In fact, increasing in size to cope with extreme cold is a known phenomenon called Bergman's Rule, where the larger a body is, the slower its temperature is cooled by frigid temperatures, hence making it far more cold resistant. Perhaps the answers to these questions will be uncovered in the future as we learn more about the other human species they shared Asia with, and possibly the hostile relationships these different groups may have endured. Modern day humans spread out over half the world's surface are descended from these remarkable humans. And interestingly, some of the highest amounts of Denisovan DNA are found in Australasia. But this is something we will get into in a future video where we discuss the possible jungle Denisovans who lived in these regions and left the strongest genetic legacy we have today. Music